money back yo signed big 30 to his brag gang label a few years ago and they started putting on for the city of memphis together but now a wild diss track for money back is leaked and it looks like the situation is really about to turn up a lot of fans thought the beef came out of nowhere but today we're breaking down how it all started in may 2024 a diss track from money back yo allegedly aimed at big 30 leaked online Moneybag aired Big 30 out for losing his momentum in the rap game, allegedly having a gambling addiction, and way more. And he started out the track rapping, I want everybody to win. If I sign you, I'm letting you win. What am I holding nigga back for? The fans gonna feel who they feel. Then Moneybag accused Big 30 of trying to go behind his back and said, try to go make a move behind my back. Let's wake it up, be for real. Talking about I stole, I ain't hurting for nothing. You capping to get out your deal. Moneybag yo said that he gave Big 30 a shot in the rap game. But Big 30 fumbled it and started blaming Moneybag for all his problems. Moneybag also spoke about the death of Nooski and how he took a loss just like Big 30. Nooski was Big 30's cousin, but he was tight with Moneybag too and signed to his bread gang label. After the track leaked, Big 30 clapped back and claimed that Moneybag Yo wasn't even talking about him in the first part of the track. According to Big 30, Moneybag was rapping about his artist Trip Star, who had fallen out with Moneybag and ended up going independent. Big 30 also said that Moneybag never bought him anything and that people in Memphis know what's really going on. Big 30 said he owed Moneybag 500k, but he paid him back almost a million to get out of his contract, and he still walked away with almost 2 mil in his pockets. Then in another post, Big 30 accused Moneybag of signing artists just to have protection in the city. Big 30 claimed that Moneybag yo needed muscle because he was getting extorted. Then he called Moneybag out for saying Nooski's name when he didn't even go to his funeral. Before he signed the Moneybag's bread gang label, Nooski was allegedly one of the most active dudes in the city. A few months before he died, Nooski had an interview with Wicked Films and talked about his come up. He was raised in the streets and went to jail for the first time when he was 14 years old. Nooski did four years in juvie, and while he was locked up, he started listening to Moneybag Yo's music. Then when Nooski came home at 18, he started seeing Moneybag around the city and they ended up getting close. Moneybag saw a lot of potential in Nooski and didn't want him going back to jail. So one day, Moneybag showed Nooski 700k in cash and made him realize that hopping in the booth was better than staying in the streets. Nooski started dropping music and signed with Bread Gang, but then in 2022, he was tragically killed in the same neighborhood he came up in. On January 28, 2022, Nooski went to Big 30 show at a local high school. Then he went back to some apartments in the Whitehaven neighborhood. It's not clear what really happened, but someone shot Nooski several times and he was already dead by the time paramedics rode up to the scene. Nooski was a huge loss for Moneybag Yo and Big 30. Before Nooski signed with Moneybag, Big 30 had already been on the rap grind for a few years. Big 30 came up on the south side of Memphis with his homie Pooh Shiesty. And before they hopped in the booth, Big 30 and Shiesty started a group called Chopper Gang and were running the streets. Big 30 hopped off the porch early and ended up getting kicked out of school. He didn't have a lot of options in the city, so he linked up with Pooh Shiesty to make Chopper Gang and started hustling for real. Chopper Gang was getting bigger and bigger and Big 30 already had a name in the streets before he started music. Eventually, Pooh Shiesty and him decided to hop in the booth, but they still had both feet in the trenches, and in 2018, Big 30 got hit with reckless endangerment and possession of a weapon. Big 30 came home and decided to go even harder with the music though, and that's when he linked up with Moneybag Yo through his cousin Nooski. Big 30 and Pooh Shiesty already had their names buzzing with their Chopper Gang crew, but linking up with Moneybag was a huge win. Pooh Shiesty signed with Gucci Mane around the same time, and back then it looked like Big 30 and Shiesty were about to take over the game. Getting deals didn't help him stay out of trouble though, and in 2020, both of them ended up getting arrested. Pooh Shiesty went down for a robbery and shooting that happened in Florida, and Big 30 got caught traveling across the state lines with 17k in cash, a Glock 40, Promethazine, Codeine, and weed. Big 30 was having some industry drama around the same time. Before Pooh Shiesty and him both got arrested, Big 30 posted a photo of him, Pooh Shiesty, and Gucci Mane on IG. Pooh Shiesty showed love in the comments, but Gucci Mane wrote, Cap, stop posting me dude, we met once. Big 30's closest homie was signed to Gucci, so the situation was looking awkward to everyone on the outside. Then Big 30 clapped back and claimed that Gucci was just mad because Big 30 didn't sign with him too. Luckily they were able to squash the beef and move on. They even collaborated together on the track Shit Crazy, not long after they started beefing to prove the fans they were on good terms. It looked like Gucci wanted to sign Big 30 at the same time he signed Pooh Shiesty but Big 30 already had a deal with money back yo and wasn't trying to get out of it back then. Fans thought Big 30 and Pooh Shiesty were about to be running the game together, but then Shiesty got locked up and went down for five years. According to money back yo, Big 30 should have been on his grind even harder after his homie got locked up, but instead he took his foot off the gas and fumbled the bag. On the diss track, money back raps, 
You're the one did that fake shit. I stood there, nigga. How the fuck am I wrong? Post went even harder when Shicey got locked, but it's like you stopped putting on. Big 30 definitely lost a lot of momentum after Pooh Shicey got locked up. They were pushing each other to go hard in the booth and were racking up millions of views every time they dropped. Big 30 was featured on Pooh Shicey's track, Neighbors, which made it to number 51 on the Billboard chart. Later that same year, Big 30 also dropped his debut mixtape, King of Kill Branch, which had appearances from some of the biggest names in rap like Lil Durk, Future, Quavo, and Offset. Even after Pooh Shicey got locked up, Big 30 and Pooh's cousin Big Scar were both featured on the 2022 XXL freshman class list. Big Scar was also signed to Gucci Mane, and fans thought they would keep the wave going while Pooh Shicey was locked up. But sadly, Big Scar ended up dying from a drug overdose, and Big 30's career never really went anywhere after that. But then Big 30 really slowed down and started falling off. He used to be one of the hottest rappers in the city, but now it's been a long time since one of his new tracks even hit a mill on Spotify. And according to Moneybag Yo, Big 30 wasn't even buying his own ice while he was blowing up in the game. On the diss track, Moneybag raps, I'm the same nigga went to Johnny Dang, spent 50k on a new set, just to give you my old shit. How the fuck you gonna let something foul come out your mouth about me, nigga? Big 30 clapped back again on Facebook and said that the only thing Moneybag ever gave him was a cheap ass Cardi. Big 30 said he's been getting money since he was 18 and never needed somebody else to take care of him, so he definitely wasn't gonna give Moneybag any credit. Then he clowned money back for only wearing drip if Lil Baby had worn it first and called Lil Baby his father. Fans thought Big 30 and Moneybag Yo were gonna do big things together, but this isn't the first time Moneybag had a major fall now in public. Moneybag came up on the south side of Memphis and got active in the streets when he was around 15 years old. He was rapping on the side, but back then he had to hustle in the trenches to put food on the table. Everything was cool for a while, but then some ops pulled up on Moneybag and tried to kill him while he was having a picnic with his family. Luckily, he made out of the situation alive though, and that's when Moneybag decided to really take rap seriously and make it out of the streets. Moneybag started dropping mixtapes and got his name buzzing in the city, then he signed a deal that changed everything. While he was coming up, one of Moneybag's biggest inspirations was Yo Gotti. Gotti was from the north side of the city, but he came from the streets just like Moneybag and became one of the biggest rappers in the south. Yo Gotti started paying attention when Moneybag Yo was dropping his mixtapes, and eventually he signed Moneybag to his CMG label. It should have been a huge win for everyone, but signing that deal is the reason why a lot of people in Memphis aren't rocking with Moneybag Yo. The north and south sides of Memphis have had issues for years, and a lot of people thought Moneybag Yo was turning his back on his own people when he signed to Yo Gotti. Back when he was neck deep in the trenches, Moneybag was part of a crew called Young Mob and was tight with a dude named Stupid Duke. But after Moneybag signed with Gotti, Stupid Duke and a bunch of other dudes from the south side stopped rocking with him. And it wasn't just some rap beef that caused the fallout. It turns out that Yo Gotti had deadly beef with Moneybag's old homies. Back in 2010, a dude from Young Mob named OG Boo Dirty was beefing with Yo Gotti and they got into an argument outside of a nightclub. Someone jumped in to break it up, and that's when OG Boo Dirty allegedly punched the dude and both sides started letting off shots. One person was tragically killed that night, and after that, the beef between Young Mob and Yo Gotti was on site. Moneybag Yo was even in the video for OG Boo Dirty's diss track against Yo Gotti, so when Moneybag switched sides, a lot of people were calling him a sellout. Even Moneybag's dad hopped on social media and started hating on him. But Moneybag said that everyone who was hating on him just couldn't see his vision. He knew that signing to Yo Gotti would take his career to a whole new level and it would be a good look for the entire city of Memphis. You know what I'm saying? Just by me doing that deal, this situation and seeing a bigger vision, they didn't understand that. You know what I'm saying? They didn't understand like, like the, the opportunity, you know what I'm saying? Like, it, it's like, bigger for you to make shit. millions, like, it's bigger than this shit, bro. Plus, according to Moneybag, the dudes that were hating on him never did anything to help him or his career. If you was more loyal, if you showed me more loyalty, if you showed me more, you know what I'm saying? Like, if you was with me before all that, maybe I would've thought about it and been like, hold up. But really, I just feel like I was already, like, it was just me anyway. But Yo Gotti was offering a major opportunity even though their hoods were beefing. So at the end of the day, it was a business decision and it ended up being a great move for his career. Not everybody stopped rocking with Moneybag though. After Big 30 clapped back and started airing him out on social media, Moneybag Yo's cousin, Big Homie G, jumped in and defend him. Big 30 claimed that Moneybag only signed him and Nooski because he needed protection. It's not clear who was allegedly putting pressure on Moneybag, but Big 30 said that Moneybag was getting extorted, so he was signing rappers from their hood for muscle. Big Homie G actually came up in the same neighborhood as Nooski and Big 30 though, and he called cap on Big 30's protection claims. Big Homie G said, We ain't never signed nobody for protection. We went around the world six deep with choppers and glocks. And I'm gonna leave it at that. Protection was never needed. Got first glocks and choppers. 
nobody knows where the beef is headed right now, but Big Dirty said that he's gonna destroy Moneybag in the booth. Hopefully they keep it all in the studio and out of the streets. Both of them have deep ties to the trenches, and Memphis is already known for being one of the deadliest cities in the world for rappers. At this point, it doesn't look like Moneybag Yo and Big Dirty are gonna be squashing anything though, so tap in for updates.